Hi, this is Mike Lewandowski and welcome to e-commerce scaling strategies by Salesgenomics again from Dubai. What we are going to cover today is basically prioritization. It is a super important topic because as you have probably, probably already realized, you cannot do any, everything all the time and you cannot focus on everything and there is only so much time we have during the day and the more we focus the more results we're actually getting from our actions and as you know there are plenty of books about how to prioritize the 8 to 20 principle 8 to 20 sales and marketing uh, the essentialist one of my favorite and much many many more and each of these books is giving you a little bit of a different insight or, or a structure as to how to handle complexity of the reality and how to prioritize within that. In sales genomics, we know how relevant this is. Uh, we decided to come up with our own uh, efficiency uh, process in order to really figure out what we are best at, what we should keep doing, what, should, what we should stop doing, what brings the biggest results for the maximum possible outcome uh, in a specific amount of time. And one thing you need to know about this is that we are using this for both the agency and prioritization things in the agency, as well as the e-commerce store. So it doesn't matter what you specifically do, whether you run an e-commerce store or you do an agency, it's still gonna be useful. You can even actually apply this to your personal life prioritization or whatever tasks you have uh, at hand. And, and the list we have is a little bit of a long list, but it's 13 points. However, you can use this point instead of reading five books about this. And obviously I'm gonna uh, put these points in the comments down below so that you can copy them uh, and let me know how this goes for you. So the point number one is, what are the things you're currently doing? Like you want to list all the activities regarding specific project that you're working on and you want to optimize to really make sure that there's nothing you're missing and there's nothing you forgot about when assessing efficiency of, of, of that project. And then once you have the full list of the things, the next thing you want to ask yourself is which of these things you're most passionate about because usually uh, we tend to bring the best results in the things we're most passionate about but it is it is not going to be the only factor that we make our prioritization decision on and the third thing you're gonna ask yourself is which of these things things you are the least passionate about so that you also cut the bottom uh, ones that you hate the most so that you can delegate them or you can get rid of them somehow if this is actually possible so that you, do, you do not drain your energy and instead you you have a lot of energy to actually pursue what you want to be pursuing and then a point number one is not on your passion but on your skills like what are the things you're doing ab absolutely the best in the world right like you know if you run the agency is this the facebook ads or google ads or these services combined or maybe something else if this is the e-commerce store which are your best products which are the most lo most loyal customers and that bring you the highest revenue and so on and so forth and then conversely the question after is okay well, well what is the bottom uh, 20 percent what is the thing that is actually not done so well, well by you or not performing that well that is time consuming and you can get rid of it right then once you have that once you have top and bottom for the passion and for for what works the next thing you do is you focus on the results specifically and for the results you're looking at the revenue figures the profit <coughs> figures i'm sorry there was a fly somewhere uh, revenue figures profit figures the satisfaction uh, that it brings you in the least amount of time. So those are the things that we are considering. You look at the things that bring the highest revenue, highest profit margin, most satisfaction in the shortest amount of time. And uh, the opposite, uh, things that bring the lowest amount of results, uh, lowest revenue, lowest profit, the least number of satisfaction. And they take, it, they take a ton of time to really see where the opportunity lies. And then again, you look at the list of these things that you have. And the next question you keep asking yourself is for each, each of these things you have listed, how much resources uh, in terms of time, money and focus you effectively need to uh, see if they are worth pursuing. Because maybe for some of the things they do not bring results right now, but maybe they are going to bring you results in the future. So you need to have a way of validating that. And then, you know, sim similarly for the, the things you're best at, you also take time into consideration and you see, okay, well, if you were to commit extra resources, what they could develop into. So for example, you know, like you have those winners and then maybe you should create more variations of the winner and how much extra revenue this can bring you. Or maybe you've been focusing on Facebook ads, but now you think of adding another extra media channel and how this is affecting your business in the six month time frame and such and such. As you know, what the MVP is to test things, to bring the results, then again, you look at the downside about the resource constraint and you ask yourself like for to test these different things, 
given the, the resource constraint and how many resources in terms of time, money and focus it takes to, to actually see if they're worth pursuing. So you're putting some boundaries on each of these individual projects to see how worth it is to, uh, to go for it. And then finally, you also establish two important things which are constraints again. First of all, what are the roadblocks and that stop you from focusing on the highest return things because these ones are the ones that you should prioritize and how to solve these roadblocks. But also which of the extra things or maybe the lower importance things you need to do in order to actually be able to follow of this highest potential return activities and then once you have answers to all this you really understand the upside the downside the constraints of each of the choices you are about to make and you answer yourself the ultimate question what is the opportunity cost of pursuing each of the things discussed uh, given resource constraints and eventually you can make the full plan out of it three to six months plan as, as to what you're testing what you're focusing on what is your 80 20 given you know all the uh, different variables of the reality we live in and then you can make a coherent plan out of this and weekly check-ins to really see how we can progress right so a lot of people do this thinking intuitively but having this laid out and having this uh, especially when you have a big team for everyone to do this kind of exercise really improves the efficiency of the team because all of a sudden everyone is focusing on the right thing uh, and all of a sudden you know instead of working 10 hours you start working five hours and instead of you know, doing $1 million, you start doing $2 million and, and really wonders happen. This is I wonder why I wanted to share this with you. Let me know in the comments how you like it, uh, if there are any questions I missed, if there is anything to add, uh, and I'm happy to open a conversation about this. Thanks for watching and remember to leave a like and subscribe.